reef. That is hard as a moldy piece of bread. Hello everyone and welcome to noisy Birmingham in inner city Birmingham. Anyway, this is quite an important job on any CVH engine and it is something that most people will have probably encountered well the blue smoke that is now the smoke that comes out of a CVH it could be a few things one bad breathers that's most engines blocked or partially blocked breathers that increases the pressure in the block and the oil has to go somewhere ie out of every single gasket and orifice it can find so that's not ideal that's one thing I would say about oil leaks Check your breathers, check your breathing system. You'll see it straight away. There should be a valve, some hoses. It should be quite obvious what the issue is. Uh, and that's a good tip for any engine. But on a CVH, it's not so much that, even though it's not a particularly clean engine and the breathing isn't particularly sophisticated or efficient. The most likely cause of blue smoke is your valve stem seals. It is just a thing that goes on them. They go hard and then they stick they stick to the valve guides themselves and move up and down. They're not supposed to move up and down with the guide. They're supposed to stay on the floor, on the seat, basically on the face of the cylinder head, not moving up and down, which might be the case here. We're going to find out. Now, as far as I'm aware, this uh, particular engine has not had any um, seals changed or anything like that. But I'll tell you what, what you can say. Uh, from previous videos is that the oil has been changed regularly because this is a pretty clean engine I have previously put some carb cleaner in it and I have done a few things in the engine bay just off camera uh, so I'll update you now on that um, the third thing could be piston rings well if it's piston rings that's another level and I would hope that some magic potions particularly the Lucas oil additive which might seal quite nicely because it's petroleum uh, it may do a good job there it's it's supposedly good for classic cars and i have used it before to good effect uh, sadly if you watch my rover 45 videos project milo didn't really get any benefit of that uh, stabilizer because it kind of crapped itself uh, not too long later in another department but anyway i'll update you on what i've been doing before i start the job so the first thing that's quite obvious to a lot of people is yes I had the last dregs of uh, diamond white and doesn't that look good? It's not the best job in the world, you know, we've got some reactions going on. I didn't want it to be perfect because the battery's going on there. It's, it's a battery, you know, you're not going to see most of that. But the point is, it looks much better than what it did before. I have been cleaning all around here again. We've been getting some of the, the wiring in situ, just putting a little bit through here. We've put... The horn has been bolted back in, just one bolt, and it goes on these tangs and it's uh, it's wiring connector. Uh, we've put a few things back in. Obviously, the dipstick's gone back in. Uh, we have put the breather hose back onto where it goes into the block. It just, you know, it clamps into place down there with this little clamp. Obviously, this goes uh, on the rocker cover itself. Uh, we've got this carb trap, which is actually sitting here because I don't want it in the house, but I know where it goes. This carb trap is the one that goes to the dizzy here uh, and basically takes a vacuum from the back of the carb. Um, we have put this hose back into place. So we've got like a bypass hose. So one half of it attaches with a hose clamp to here and then the rest attaches to the top of the heater matrix. The bottom heater pipe, this one down here, it is in place and it goes all the way here. So it goes all the way down here and down to the bottom of the heater matrix. So I think it's the outlet, is it? Yes, it is. Um, I got that right. Uh, did I get that right? Maybe. I have done some carb cleaning around here just to make sure it's nice and clean. Uh, I have to say it scrubbed up rather well. So um, I'm pretty pleased with everything. Um, so that's all good in this department. I don't think there's anything else that I've done really. Obviously, I've put the uh, I put that back on in the last episode. We've put the vacuum servo. We screwed it back in using a flare spanner into the inlet, and it just popped back in on the other side. We're starting to see where wires go. It's very obvious where bits and pieces go. So it's all good. Now we are ready to change the valve stem seals. Now on a CVH engine, unlike many other engines, um, it has a weird feature because you, you take the rocker cover off and you think, where's the camshaft? 
Oh no, the camshaft isn't on the top. It's below the rock. It's below the valves, which basically means, well, you need rockers. <laughs> essentially, it, essentially you need rocker arms uh, that push on hydraulic tappets uh, that push on the camshaft, uh, and you've got these valve guides as well. All, these valve guides are almost like <sighs> mini push rods. Almost, they like almost mini push rods uh, in a sense. So it is kind of like an overhead cam version of a push rod engine because you've still got this feature. A lot of diesel engines or modern engines tend to have rockers these days, mainly because if the timing belt, which is interference on every other car this today, probably since the eighties, most cars are interference, um, which means that if the belt breaks, valves and pistons will collide, I'm afraid, unless you're very unlucky, very, very lucky, I should say. Um, but most um, cars have got a feature where if the timing belt snaps, all it will do is it won't actually damage the valves and the pistons. The rockers will snap. So the rockers will actually snap and save the actual pistons and valves uh, from colliding. So something has to break and it's usually the rockers. Um, that's kind of a, a normal feature, really. Uh, I have done some work underneath, mainly just tidying everything up under here. And we have done a bit of stone chip on the um, sump. It isn't quite perfected yet. Um, but it's it's getting there. But anyway, the first step is I would recommend this. We've got some fresh engine oil in here where we're going to put the hydraulic tappets. Now it doesn't matter where the hydraulic tappets go to where they came out. Usually, with the rocker arms and all these all the hardware, I'm going to put them back exactly where they came. Okay, so we're going to put them down on this cardboard exactly how they came out. So this is how you would see. So number so let's say uh, number one. Here, exhaust, number one, inlet. Number one, exhaust, number one, inlet. And then we'll go across, okay? So, simple as that. Oh, making marks already with my finger. There we go, lovely, I've marked it out. Um, so that's what we're gonna do sequentially, okay? But the main thing is, how on earth do you change the valve stem seals? Because the stem seal obviously is under there, underneath the spring. Uh, where the valve got the valve guide goes through the spring and then the seal sits at the bottom um, Well, how do we actually change uh, the valve stem seals? In situ without taking the cylinder head off because that's what would need to be happen. Well because of the design of this uh, actual um, Engine the cam is sitting below there You can actually access a lot of things over the top. It's a serv it, It's almost like they designed them to be serviced um, ideally um, but with the aid of this tool from Sealy you can do so it's a very common tool and if you've had a CVH and done this you will know what this tool is it is a spring compressor tool it uses the thread for the rocker and you basically it pivots off the actual body and it will compress the spring in order to retain the collet now, there's a few things you need to be aware of before we even start this. The first one is we have all these oil ways, okay? We've got some oil ways around here, okay? And we have also got these gaps. And this gap, you can see the camshaft through these gaps. There's one at the back here. There's one where my finger is. There's another one here. There's another one down here. I'll tell you, you do not want that collet disappearing down there. So you're going to have to wedge some cloths uh, and make sure that there is absolutely no way you're gonna have to put cloths all around this to make sure there's no way that the collets are going to go anywhere and they come out i do recommend i've got a strong magnet and i've got a pencil magnet that's uh, that's what you were going to use to retrieve it it is a bit fiddly but as you can see we have the what they call the modified top hat piston well i was going to say piston ring the modified top hat valve stem seal sorry i've been working long a long day today. I've just come home. Uh, <laughs> my brain's skewered. Uh, ideally, this is not the sort of job to do when your brain is skewered. Just saying, guys, don't do what I'm doing. Um, but we can see here, you've got the uh, the, the normal uh, seal at the top. But we've got this sort of, I think it's slightly longer. And <laughs> it is a top, the reason they call it a top hat. Can you actually guess why they call it a top hat? Hmm. But it's the modified version. They're about a pound a pop, these are. They're so cheap, it's utterly untrue. So that's what we're gonna place on. You are going to need 
Well, you're going to need a few things. We're going to need a 24 millimeter uh, socket for this. Okay. Okay, to uh, twist the nut on to compress the spring. And if I get over here, we're going to need a 13 millimeter. I would use a half inch to take the nut off the rocker. It's as simple as. So let's start with this one. Now, main thing is, now, before you say this, guys, yes, I know, I'm using a pair of old boxer shorts. This is where my old clothes go. Uh, they don't go to shouty shops. They go to uh, my rag collection. Um, but in this case, I would just, um, it's actually got a really important task. Um, so just stuff the rag in every single, uh, I call them a rag because they're no longer boxer shorts because I don't wear them as boxer shorts. Um, this is uh, terrific, this is. And um, just keep on stuffing it in. That's, that's the main thing. It's not going to interfere with what you're doing. And once you're happy, let's crack these, uh, these off. So uh, they might be a bit tight, these. Let's have a look. Now, I'm just going to move my tray so it doesn't interfere. Okay, here we go. Well, that wasn't tight at all. As you can expect with these threads, they're just very well oiled now my tripod is kind of sitting on the chassis rail of the car so forgive the slight shaking anyway there we go that's free now we've got a few things that will come out now okay we've got the nut okay just a normal sort of it's like a castellated nut with some ribs on the top. Can you see those ribs at the top? Interesting. Um, but now the rocker comes off. Now the rocker, okay, so we've got this piece that sits in here. It's like a trunnion, okay? And this will sit at the bottom here. So we just poke it through, okay? It just sits in like that, okay? It's just a trunnion, okay? It just sits through the bottom. So if I just turn it around, no. Get it orientated properly. There we go, like that. Okay, so it drop out and keep all this together. So put the nut back in the cup. Okay, you put that on the cardboard. Now, what we've got down here, obviously, we've got the spring here which sits on the collet, which we've got to release a little bit. Now, there is a hydraulic tappet. Now we can retrieve that with a magnet. I'm gonna take these hydraulic tappets out. It doesn't matter where these go because they're gonna go in a vat of oil uh, in a second. So let me just get my magnet. There we go, straight out it comes. Oh, that's a bit reluctant. There we go. There will be some oil. There's your hydraulic tappet. Please don't ask me how the hell hydraulic tappets work. They work on oil pressure. It is important to check and change the oil regularly because these will block up. I'm gonna put these in fresh engine oil to get the crap out of them and to make sure that they are primed because if they're not primed, you, the first time I start this car up, it's gonna sound really, really bad. Um, so I'm gonna put these on the cardboard. Yeah, these are the flat tappet types. So just put them there and um, yeah, it's a, a flat tappet uh, hydraulic lifter, oh, lifters. Uh, we, some people call them lifters, uh, some people call them cam followers, different names, but anyway, it is going in there. Now, there is something else that I'm thinking, I'm sure, ah, yeah, right, there's a spacer here. You see this spacer that um, the actual whole thing sits on? This should come off. I'm hoping to get in there with my fingers, I might have to just remove the rag. Yeah, it's um, it's a little spacer. I'm not sure if I can actually get that out. Oh yeah, there we go. It was a bit stiff. There we go. I just got my finger. Get a picking underneath if you're struggling. Now that's a spacer that sits underneath the thread. So remember to keep all that together. I'm just going to put that there. Now, is there a particular way of showing which way it goes? The truth is, I'll put it the way. Look, that's the, the clean side. You can see that that's the back side. So I'll kind of put it like that. Leave that like that. Now, the next thing is to get, well, what we're gonna do is just clean 
um, the face just around it, just get the rag in and just clean that up a little bit. But what we're going to do next is put the tool on because we need to compress this spring to get the collet out. Now, which way, which way do we go? Easy, we go that way because you can see the shape of the spring. Okay, so it basically pivots. This face will sit against the cylinder head. Some people have to um, put washers on and it's, um, it's a tricky one that I've known um, people to damage the, because this cylinder head is made of aluminium. It's an aluminium head. Um, you can actually damage this, this, I mean, look at that. Look how thin this piece is here. You could crush that in. If you put washers on that to space this out, you could easily do some real damage. Um, so I would just go with the flat face of the tool, okay? So make sure that is relatively square. And I'm just gonna get my uh, nut. Now, this is the way it generically goes. It goes in like that, okay? And just twist it in, okay? Just um, twist it in for now, okay? Make sure that that is sitting nice and true. Uh, we don't want it going cockeyed. Um, there we go that seems quite nice now this is where you need your rags in position guys so get everything in position i'm kind of not happy with that probably put another rag down um i don't want too much but uh i've i've, done, I've had a chuck out of boxer shorts recently um it's all good to have a bit of a clear out but i'm kind of happy with how things are now um now we get uh 24 mil and um Go for it. And then we'll set it to turn. We want to screw it. We want to screw this in as if we're tightening. Okay, go really nice and easy. And it's already screwing on the thread. There we go. Good, good, good. And it should start to compress that spring. And it's already starting to move. It's good. Like I said, I've come home from work and my brain is a bit fuzzled and this is not the sort of job really you should be doing when your brain is fuzzled. You could get it really badly wrong. To be honest, you can't get it wrong, but there's one thing I might have forgotten in the intro. Yeah, the bit about getting number one at top dead centre because that might actually help to get the spring compressed enough to actually uh, get the collet out. Yeah. So um, I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take the spark plugs out uh, and rotate the um, the cam. Mm, interesting. You might ask yourself why I'm borrowing to take the spark plugs out. Might make it a bit easier to rotate um, the engine. Just saying, guys. Just saying. But we need to get top dead center in order to change the uh, the valve stem seals. I have um, I did read that and. Um, somehow it just bypassed my brain um so this is a video of just being cautious uh maybe go back and read the haynes manual again i do know that these bolts have to be torqued down to 27 uh newton meters okay that is on any cvh engine by the way uh, regardless of size and capacity now i am probably going to give them plugs a bit of a clean uh Maybe put them in, so I've got some spare petrol, I might just dip them in petrol. And you can do that with spark plugs, because, you know, petrol and spark plugs, you get what I mean in a petrol engine? Uh, but anyway, we need a decent sized socket, which I'll find. We've got to get that pointer to line up there. Okay, we've got a notch. Uh, we've got a notch somewhere on the, the block. Can't think of where it is now, uh, but it has to line up somewhere. Let me just go and consult that manual. The other way of doing this, as you know, just put a screwdriver into the cylinder, a very long one, that possibly isn't long enough, and you will um, find out where the piston is in relation to its travel. Uh, basically, the screwdriver will come up, and then it will start going down again. The point at which it goes up and starts coming down, that's your top dead centre, by the way. The piston will be at the same, the same height of its travel. Basically, number one, and number four will be the same, and two and three were different. We'll be we're having to do the same thing with two and three. But to start off, we just set the top dead center and check with a screwdriver. Okay, so you need a 19 mil 
and I found the pointer. It's just there, it was just hiding behind the cam. And we have to turn the whole engine uh, to the front, the, the correct way of direction. There we go, we're just moving the pointer. Just moving the cams just slightly. It can be a bit stiff. You see what I mean? It's stiff without the spark plugs in. Um, but uh, just turn it fractionally and um, there we go. Might have to adjust it slightly, but that is top dead centre. Okay, and that is uh, number one, number four will be right at the top. In fact, if I get my, not the most appropriate tool, uh, a magnetic pickup, it's the only tool I have that's actually quite long. Um, but if I put that straight in there, oh God, I've, I've literally only just gone through the spark plug and it's there. The piston is, it's there, straight at the top. There you go. Now, if I uh, turn that any more to the right, this would start going down. You'd start, um, the magnet would disappear. I'll tell you what though, I've picked up an awful lot of crud off the uh, top of the pistons. Uh, hopefully I can burn that off uh, with some good long runs, which this car needs. But anyway, take this off. We don't need that no more. It's good to know it's a 19 mil on the top. Um, and obviously this is the thing. I wanted to wait to a, a timing. This is why I waited uh, to do this job first before the timing belt because couldn't do this well ideally you'd have to complete the timing belt job on the same day which i was kind of hoping to anyway but um now we're in a position where these springs would be kind of at the end of their travel now and uh, we can now start to do the job again so get the rags back into place um this should work Fingers crossed it does. Sometimes you have to use a threaded bar with these things, but um, I'm pretty happy with what I've seen. And uh, we can stick the tool on, as usual. Part two, <laughs> take two. This is where some YouTubers will go, you know what, I should just start from the beginning and pretend I knew what happened. The truth is, I don't like to show that sometimes because I'm new to this game and you only learn, and I'm pretty sure we've all done this, we've thought, oh, I haven't done that. I've got to start again. So um, <laughs> it's one of those things, but we'll get it all lined in. Let's go. Now see how it's starting to pivot just again, but look at what's going on down here. Just try and keep the camera steady for you. There we go, spring compressed, and the collet is being revealed. Can you see where it joins up? They're two pieces, they're two halves. So if we can try and just compress that spring a bit more than that, we reveal the collet. There we go. Don't think I can get that out yet. Let me just try a bit more than that. Okay, then that's quite tight now. Okay, let me take this off. Now, can I? Oh, yep, it's come apart. Right, okay. Uh, I need to get my magnet. Where's the Where's the magnet? Get here. Come on, baby. Come on with me. Yes, 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 yes. See what I mean? You do not want that going down the cam. We are going to put this in the magnetic tray. That's not going anywhere. Um. They're basically contoured. You see how they go in? They're tapered. They go up like a, a pyramid. The bottom bit has to be fatter. The top bit has to be the most shallow end. Okay. And we're going to extract the other end because that is now free as well. Stop gripping that. No signs. Careful, careful, careful. There we go. Dun, 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 dun. Ah, sorry. I got it the wrong way round. <laughs> sorry the top end is the fat bit so this is where you've got to pay attention to how things come off a car so the top bit is the fat bit and the shallow end goes at the bottom so top bottom ignore my previous advice about that see you've got to learn these things i've just learned there um i should know this because i've actually dealt with um valve springs before but never in situ um and it wasn't even my car 
But now, we can now loosen this off and um, the spring will just come out. Uh, there is nothing keeping that spring down. It will be stiff, by the way, because that spring is now, well, it's got no, um... <laughs> yeah, that thread is a bit dry. What I'd probably say is I'd probably oil the threads. Even though I think everything is oiled well in here, I'd actually oil this tool. So I'm going to get some engine oil from there, and I'm going to actually put some oil on the threads of the tool, because it can get a bit dry and... I always recommend it whenever, whenever using like a, a bush tool, a train arm bush tool, always oil the threads because it's the difference between something coming off and not. So what you want is you want to put oil in this, but um, there we go. Done. That is free as a bird now. Okay, take the tool off. There we go. Spring off. Now, we've got the top cup. I'll just show you this, okay, go away, okay, take it up, Wow. I'm going to have to do some cleaning in there, there is a bit of sludge in there, carb cleaner to the rescue, okay, what we have, <coughs> got to keep all this together, do not excuse the bike, do not confuse the springs, you must keep them the same, have a look, you've got a top cup, okay, keep that top cup together now we have the valve stem seal now i believe there is a bottom cup that is reluctant to come off at the moment you see that that's a bottom cup there we go it's spinning there we go now valve guides eh, it's not do you know what that's not bad now i've pulled this valve guide up and the seal which is here, the valve stem seal, does not want to come up with it. That is a good sign. Usually, they do. Now, I've got to find out how I'm getting that out because that is quite tricky. It's actually, it's actually held in there. I'm going to get my pick of usefulness to get it out. Now, there's no, there's no particular way of doing this. But basically, you've got to try and avoid scratching the valve guide um, and just make sure you just... Oh my God, that's hard as hell. Grief. That is hard as a mouldy piece of bread. That's a really bad one. Yeah. There we go. It's gone. It's gone. It's just, it's just moved. We've just disturbed it off the uh, the shaft. Um, see if I can lear it up. Oh gosh, the whole thing is just—it's horrible. I'm just gonna lear away. Oh, there we go. It's gone. It's gone, 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 gone. My pick has come in. There we go. Oh dearie me. Well, you can see. The, um, the valve stem seal at the top it's just absolutely hard uh, you can compare that to the size of the new one yes and the new one it's a fair bit tighter if, you, if I just bring you in mmm it's a bit tighter yeah rubbish Alright, I've, I've put my pick up somewhere, so I've, I've put the old seal there for now, okay, because it's going to be organised, uh, but just um, use the magnet. Okay, the bottom spring cup is coming out and spewing oil everywhere. I didn't say this was um, a clean job, you've got to try and keep it relatively clean. So, there you go, there is one out. Now, all you've got to do is... Clean the mess up and oil spewing all over my new paint. Look at this. Oh dear. Well, it's all right. It will clean up again. Um, I don't. I don't like it when I get oil over new paint. Anyway, um, so I'm going to give this a bit of a clean up in here. It's all going to be stripped down and cleaned. And I'm going to take that one out, that one out, 
and that one out. Now, to take these four out, we've got to get top dead. Well, we haven't got to get top dead center because that'll be for number one and number four. Number two and three will be at the bottom. So we've got to turn the engine again to change, uh, to get these off as well. So uh, I'm going to do a bit of cleaning uh, before I actually sort this out. But I'm going to take that one off, that one off, and that one off, okay? And put them all on the floor here, as I've just done with the tool. And then we're going to reassemble those four with the new seals. Cut back to them. <sighs> Five minutes later, we have actually, I've actually taken all the rockers off because we don't need the rockers on um, to actually uh, be able to do this job. Uh, so with all the rockers are off, all the spacers are off, all the hydraulic tappets are in there. So the only one we've got off is that one at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I'm just, before I repeat the process, I'm gonna do this off camera. So we're gonna take that, I'm gonna take that one off, that one, and that one, because those are the only ones I can take off at this moment, because these are the only two cylinders at top dead center. These two are not, can't take these off, um, as far as I'm aware anyway. But uh, I'm just looking through and looking at the cams and I can see some very shiny cams and I can't see any scoring, which is even more important. I can't see any sludge build up. I mean, these oil waves usually get gummed up. Um, there's nothing. I'm really happy with the condition of this head and it just goes to show how important it is to change the oil on a CVH and luckily this car has had this sort of level of quality service from the day one. Um, it's only in the last couple of years where it's been let go or as I say in the last 12 years but I suspect the oil would have been freshly changed over 12 years ago just you know it's been hanging around a bit. Um, but we are, um, I'm going to clean out the corners uh, a little bit here because I don't like where all this uh, sludge is. Naturally, carb cleaner. I don't want it going in there, but we're gonna, I'm going to lightly clear it off anyway. Anyway, I'll cut back when I've done those three. Right, now obviously we've got to put the lower spring seat back into place. Just uh, give it a bit of a rough sort of clean up. Okay, face is all sort of clean down there um you'll tell that it's the bottom one and not the top one i'll show you uh, i'll show you the top one actually uh if i can retrieve one that's the top so that's the bottom it's much more shallow the top the top one is much more deeper okay so that goes on the top this goes on the top of the spring well, that one this one goes on the bottom anyway Mincing my words as usual on this channel. Now, valve stem seal. I don't really think there's a need to lubricate because there's some oil on the shaft anyway. Just place it down. Now, you might just have to... That's a nice tight fit. And you might just have to keep your fingers to push it over the little uh, grooves that are the um, for the collet. But there you go. That has now sat right and butted up nicely against the bottom of the whole thing. Perfect. That's absolutely perfect. Right. Okay, get your spring and then seat it in. Lovely. Look how far that is down there. But make sure it's Ooh. it would help sometimes if you just push the, 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 the spring in by hand while winding this in. It might help just to seat everything a little bit more correctly because what will happen is there's gonna be a bit of fighting going on. If I just do that, there we go. Put your hand over it and there we go. We're winding that in, easy as anything. Now just make sure we're on. Yes, we're on. There we go. I'm glad I can give you this sort of camera angle. Okay, that's not gonna go any further now. Now this is the tricky bit. This is the bit that, <laughs> it's almost squeaky bum time. Now, well, 
it is squeaky bum time, Manchester United fans. Now we're going to put one there, yeah, another rag, and block up that hole there as well, okay? We're also going to block up that hole there as well, okay? Don't take chances. This is something where you don't want to, you don't want to get it wrong, okay? So we've blocked all the orifices around here, okay? Now, to get this collet in, <laughs> it's gonna be tight actually. Might just have to go a fraction more. <sighs> okay. Okay, right, let's get it in. Now there's no real easy way of doing this. You can use grease to hold them together. Now remember, the top side has to be the tapered bit, okay? So it has to be the wider part. And remember, we're only putting it on two legs, two. So we only need two of those collets showing, and we've got two. So I'm just gonna put this in. Now, I tell you what, I'm taking my gloves off. I'm not happy wearing these gloves doing this. Right, I feel as if I've got control doing this. Oh, you don't just park it on. We'll try to anyway. Now you may want to use a magnet to attempt. Hmm. I think you might have to go down just a fraction. Oh, is it on? You gonna seat him? Right, I've just about got it in. I've got it seated in there with my finger. Grab the other one, make sure it's the, other, the same orientation and go for it. Use a pick, try to control it, Andrew. They're in. Now, there is a, 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 the problem with this now is that these two are going to want to separate. It is good advice to put grease on them, but hopefully when I release that spring gently, gently, they will stay in place. So that's precisely what we're going to do, but we are going to prepare. Okay. And there's no better way of doing this and holding my hand over the entire thing now just um, obviously we're loosening i'm going to cover that don't trust it okay that's gone loose Okay, just inspect it again. It's starting to come up. My experiences. Take your time. Yeah, that's coming up nice though. This is very loose. there I think we can safely say that 
we are there. Take the tool out, and there you go. That is one valve spring into position and held in with the collet. Done. Whew. I would recommend probably putting grease to hold them together, but everything's seated really nicely. Now this tool, you can tell where the wear marks are. My God, that's the amount of pressure under. Now you see this on the block. This is where it layers just a little bit on the, the faces a little bit. You're gonna get this. This is, I'm afraid, predictable. They've all got them. Uh, all the ones where, well, actually I haven't done that one yet, but all the ones where I've taken springs out, they've all got this sort of wear on. That's usual. But that's him. Now, put the rocker back on. Okay, main pointer, hydraulic lifter, fresh oil, and pop it in. Should. It should go in quite nicely, although, God, this one's a bit, a bit stiff. There we go. <laughs> there we go. That's the way it should go. And uh, excellent. Okay. Make sure the trunnion is in place. It can go either way, as far as I'm aware. Um, there doesn't seem to be anything in the manual about that. Okay. So what we want is it to go on like fast. Okay. Lovely. And then we put the nut back on. It's a 13 mil nut. Or oily and greasy is what you want, but a clean oily. That's exactly what you want. Now, I'm just going to tighten that with the 13. Where's my 13 gone? There we go. Just uh, tighten it up, not loosen it, Andrew. That would be quite helpful. Okay, when it's tight enough, torque wrench, 22, uh, sorry, 27 newton meters. So get it nice and square. Well, that's all. Well, I know you shouldn't multiply, um, click it, but that is tight enough. Just check it again. Lovely. 20, 27 newton meters. There we go. All cleaned up. Done. Now, I'm sure you'd be fascinated if I was to do the whole thing. The truth is, I've got a bit of cleaning to do around here. And the main point is tappets in oil everything organized everything has to be organized can't be all over the place uh yeah um i might have mixed the spring cup no matter as long as you don't mix the actual springs up uh honestly don't do that um but um of all the top hat seals and the collets yeah so basically that is how you do it guys now i've done one so I'm gonna do the other three in the same manner. The only thing is, these two. I have got to put something down here to block up these oilways. Could you imagine why them collets going down there? Game over, head off. That is how bad that is. So um, I'm gonna proceed with doing this job on these three. Then what you need to do, and this is a bit of a faff, but I'm gonna to have to do it as anyway, is you're gonna to have to turn the crankshaft of uh, the camshaft again to turn all these valves again because what we want is we want one one and four are at top dead center engine is at top dead center one and four are at the height the the, the top which is why we can take the valve springs off which is why we couldn't earlier number two and three are at the bottom okay they're quite equal well relatively at the bottom i would say um we've got to bring them to the top so we've got to bring these to the top and these two have got to go down. So you put a screwdriver or a long pick or whatever in there to get those valves as high as possible. Okay, you'll know when they're at the top. Okay, you're literally, as I say, you're literally 
put one of these in and uh, I'll show you again on number one. You pull it in and has that gone through the spark plug well? No, it hasn't. It has now. Look at that. It's just nothing. But you put it in number two. Oh God, it's all the way down there. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I'm going to leave that here. But once you've got it set, so number two and number three are at the top, you can do all these four in exactly the same way. And that's it. You've done those two, you've done those two, and then you do those four in that same sequence. I'll tell you something though. You can't imagine how oil gets in because the valve is underneath here, okay? Because this is, well, the valve seat will be under there. But um, you can imagine how oil gets between that guide, this shaft, because this is the valve guide, and the little tr sort of trunnion here. It will get in between these two and go into your cylinder, blue smoke. That's why CVHs blow blue smoke, because of these seals. But there are modern solutions to this. It is a known fault. And I'm hoping well, this will improve the oil situation, because looking at these, these are not good seals. So regardless, we're going to get less blue smoke out the back. Will it cure the problem altogether? I'm mostly sure. But anyway, guys, I'm going to leave you be because it's getting really dark. It's been about two hours um, because I want to take my time and I want to keep taking my time and I don't want to have to rush. And quite frankly, part two, if I did a part two of this, the only thing that you need to know about is once you've finished with these three, you need to go and get the engine to top dead centre on these two. Well, it's not top dead centre because technically it's one and four, but you need to bring these cylinders up to the top of their combustion stroke. Okay? And you can do those four. There you go. That's how to do it. It's a bit of a faff. My advice is don't do what I did. When you're putting the collets on, put some grease on them. They'll stick together then. And I'm gonna do I'm gonna have to do that for these two buggers because <laughs> oh yeah. And guess which is the one I'm doing next? Oh yeah, it's this one. So wish me luck in a few moments. If there's anything that happens, naturally, I will put it in the film. But for now, g'day guys. Final note, I really do hope that if you have a Ford with a CVH engine and you have this issue with blue smoke and you know or you're not sure if your valve stem seals have been done, this is the way to do it. It's quite simple actually. It's a bit of a faff and yes, when you're at the stage where that spring is compressed so much, it can't compress anymore. And you're putting your fingers in that area to get your collets on. That is intimidating to a lot of people because that tool relies on the thread going into the block of the thread of the rocker arm to keep that compression going. And all it takes is that thread to give up and your fingers come off. You'll lose your hand. The pressure of that spring, you're going to iron it at least. But nevertheless, it's a well-made tool. And I trust it, and I've done this job before, so I can rely on that. It's really intimidating, but take your time. And it can be done at home, and you will have a big, big plus point. When I come to moving this car on, it will have a big plus point. Valve stem seals, done. Which most people generally have to pay a mechanic to do. You can't, you can do it. You just need the tool. You just need the tool. Good day all. A few days later, because of a missing collet, which I managed to find, it dropped on the floor, in another episode. Because, as you can see, I've been doing other things while waiting for a collet to arrive that I don't need no more. It's all been done. Just don't drop a collet down the engine, guys. All of them have been done. Hopefully, Ruby will not be blowing blue smoke. Fingers crossed. There will be an improvement from what I've seen. Take care, guys.